Jo Swinson. Thank you very much indeed, Mr Amos. And uh, I would also like to congratulate the Honourable Member for Islington uh, North for securing this debate. Uh, one and a half hours seems, uh, uh, unfortunately, a short amount of time to be able to thoroughly cover the many issues in what is a huge uh, continent. But uh, nonetheless, it's good that we've been able to uh, raise so many of the different aspects uh, of, uh, of the issues uh, affecting that continent and the UK's relations with it uh, in this short debate today. Uh, I think it's a particularly important uh, debate to have because I think in foreign policy terms, it's often easy to overlook uh, a region like Latin America when there's the, the daily news headlines about the latest crisis between Israel and Palestine in the Middle East, uh, the ongoing threats about uh, Iran and uh, potential nuclear capability, uh, the geopolitical uh, changes with R Russia and China, and indeed uh, the military action that we're engaged in in both Iraq and Afghanistan. So uh, it's often the case that uh, Latin America uh, is, is not necessarily top of the agenda, and that's why it's important that we do um, in this parliament find the time to, uh, to discuss these issues. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, like other members, I was uh, particularly intrigued to hear from uh, the Honourable Member who opened the debate because of his uh, more than a quarter century of, uh, of interest in this issue and indeed uh, great knowledge and expertise having had uh, many visits to, uh, to Latin America. Um, and it was also fascinating to hear about the recent parliamentary delegation to uh, Bolivia as well, uh, which uh, I always feel that uh, having visited a place uh, gives you uh, an additional uh, uh, sort of uh, sense of authenticity in, in talking about it. So it's been particularly interesting to hear those views. So why should Latin America matter to the UK? Uh, there's a whole host of reasons uh, which we've heard about. There's the, uh, the issues to do with climate change uh, and the environment. Apparently more than 20% of the world's oxygen is uh, produced by the Amazon rainforest, sometimes described as the lungs of the earth, uh, and with deforestation a, a, a big and pressing issue, uh, and in fact accounting for a, a large percentage of uh, the world's carbon dioxide emissions. Uh, this is obviously something which is going to be growing in importance in, uh, in the forthcoming years. Uh, Indeed, the global influence of Latin America is one that is growing. Brazil, in particular, uh, looks like it will become a, a regional superpower, and, uh, and that will lead, uh, no doubt, to uh, discussions in other international bodies. There's already uh, much, and has been for many years, much discussion about the Security Council representation uh, at the UN and uh, what countries should be entitled to, uh, to permanent seats. And this is something where uh, the UK will have to be involved in, in those negotiations. And uh, indeed, the political consequences were highlighted of closing UK missions in these countries by uh, the Honourable Member for the Recon, given that this area is going to uh, be uh, of growing importance globally. And then, of course, we have the, the drugs trade, um, most of the co cocaine, which uh, ends up on the streets of Britain, comes from Latin America, uh, and indeed the issues of, uh, of poverty and human rights, which, uh, even though they might be on the other side of the world and not on our doorstep, should nonetheless be ones that uh, concern us all as parliamentarians. Certainly give way to the Honourable Member. Mr David Taylor. She included in her reference to human rights the uh, position of, of women in Latin America, but, but specifically in Guatemala. I had a debate on that quite some time ago, and I've asked more recent questions. Women in Guatemala are uh, very prone, uh, uh, subject to uh, rather uh, domestic and street violence, rape and murder at horrific levels, and uh, much more needs to be done by countries like our own to promote human rights, uh, particularly to indigenous women, and uh, to uh, help them get access to the uh, Guatemalan a system of justice. The, the position of women in that country is absolutely bleak and dire. I very much thank the Honourable Member for that intervention and, uh, and it's very interesting to listen to uh, what he says about Guatemala, a country which I, I would confess I don't know a huge amount about and so I think that's uh, certainly of interest. And it is it's unfortunately often the case that where there are human rights abuses and in countries where those are rife, it's often women that, uh, that suffer the worst brunt of those abuses. So, uh, so it's, it's certainly important that this government that does all it can to, uh, to encourage the promotion of human rights uh, in Guatemala and indeed uh, across, across the other countries. Um, and turning to the, uh, the more detailed issue of uh, climate change and deforestation, uh, it's quite staggering to think that uh, nearly 50%, 45.9% to be exact, of Latin America is forest, which, uh, which is really quite a, a staggering amount when, uh, when you think about it, higher than any other region in the world. And as I mentioned, uh, 
this is where the uh, carbon emissions uh, are, it's about 20 to 25% of global carbon emissions comes from deforestation. And you would almost think that avoiding deforestation ought to be a bit of a quick win. It, it, you know, it's not requiring any massive change in technology, uh, but it is something which is proving very difficult. And I actually am a member of the Environmental Audit Select Committee currently conducting an uh, inquiry into the very issue of deforestation. We recently vis visited um, the Congo Basin uh, and Cameroon, uh, which obviously is on a different continent, but very similar issues and of course how we manage as a, as a world community to avoid deforestation but still to make sure that we keep the rights of uh, local indigenous people who are living within the forest uh, is a very difficult balance to strike and I don't think that we're uh, anywhere near there yet with being able to have a system of uh, payments for uh, avoided, uh, avoided deforestation that are robust. Um, uh, there have been, uh, Brazil certainly has announced plans uh, just a couple of months ago to reduce deforestation by 70% over the next 10 years, uh, but, uh, but this isn't necessarily a, a target as high as uh, is needed. Certainly uh, Greenpeace Brazil have been critical of it in terms of looking at uh, the, the level of change that we need to uh, achieve. Indeed, while deforestation had been decreasing uh, for the last four years, last year unfortunately it was on the rise again. Another uh, environmental issue is that of biofuels and, uh, and obviously uh, while there can be advantages to biofuels in reducing deforestation, Brazil produces a huge amount uh, of, uh, of sugarcane uh, ethanol and that in fact can be quite a, a good and sustainable biofuel. When land is cleared and particularly when forests are cleared to grow crops for biofuels then any environmental benefit is lost and uh, that's why again the Environmental Audit Select Committee in a uh, a report on this called for the government to halt the rush towards uh, biofuel uh, targets being increased in Europe because uh, the sustainability guarantees were just not yet in place. Uh, I'll certainly give me to the honourable member. Is that be aware that one of the problems has been that the growth of maize based ethanol has actually forced up the price of maize and thus of tortillas, which are a, the only form of sustainable food for a lot of very poor people, particularly in Central America, and essentially those people are starving to feed American gas guzzlers. Joe Swinson. Indeed, and the Honourable Gentleman raises a very important point. In fact, uh, the UN Special Rapporteur on the Right to Food called the growth of biofuels a crime against humanity, which is pretty st strong and stark language, but certainly highlights the scale of the problem. So, uh, so there are many unintended consequences of biofuels which may be pursued with good intentions, but we do need to make sure that we have those sustainability guarantees in place. Unfortunately, there have been some recent moves by the government to, uh, to do so. Um, the cocaine trade in the UK is estimated to be about £6.6 .6 billion, pounds, and obviously uh, much of that comes from uh, Latin America, and in particular Colombia. Uh, there obviously are British government efforts to, uh, to reduce drug trafficking, and I had the uh, advantage uh, last summer when I was uh, in Cuba to actually meet with uh, some of the uh, Navy officials from our ship Wave Ruler, uh, which is one of the uh, British vessels which uh, patrols uh, in, the, in the Latin America region uh, and as well as providing assistance when hurricanes strike, also has a remit in counter narcotics. And uh, they were just having a very interesting conference with their Jamaican colleagues about successful strategies. And I, you know, I, I note that there is some very good work happening, but, uh, but I hope the government will recognise that uh, this is a, a, a continuing battle that we must fight. Because while also tackling the demand on the streets of the UK, we also have to tackle the supply side coming from, uh, from uh, Latin America as well. Uh, the information campaign, Frank, which I'm sure many members will have seen on the television, uh, is, uh, is certainly very welcome. But I think as well as highlighting the, the, uh, the social and health problems with, uh, with uh, cocaine use, actually some of the, the darker side of it funding terrorism, kidnapping and violence uh, is one that would also be an important message to get across. Um, there were some interesting contributions about the economic development within Latin America, particularly in terms of the uh, improved quality of life in Venezuela, such as uh, better water supply, a uh, better uh, narrowing of the equality gap. But there is still huge inequality within Latin America. I think within uh, Brazil, the, the top 10% earn 44.8% uh, of the income in that country, whereas the bottom 10% earn just 0.9% uh, of the income. So there's a huge uh, equality gap. And where a lot of these countries are uh, seen as being in the middle income tier, in fact, uh, there are, really is masking the fact that there's a huge amount of poverty within Latin America. And so there is still a role for DFID. And of course, at least we have a minister who's got background in DFID as well uh, to, to bring to, uh, to, bring to that, uh, that issue. 
And then just finally on the, the issue of human rights, I think it was very important the point that was made uh, both by the member for Islington North and indeed the member for Hackney that uh, while uh, Hugo Chavez or Evo Morales we may or may not agree with their ideological standpoint, but nonetheless their very election uh, as members of the indigenous uh, population within those countries is a great step forward. There are still many human rights challenges uh, within Latin America and in particular I would like to see the government doing more in terms of uh, in Colombia the support we give to the Colombian military. The recent Foreign Affairs Select Committee report found widespread and systematic killing of civilians. Uh, if we're supporting uh, training of the Colombian military and that is what is going on then I think that really needs to be uh, rethought because uh, there seems to not be appropriate guarantees uh, that, uh, that those human rights are being protected and that would certainly be one area where we clearly have a little bit of leverage uh, that we could uh, call for uh, an improvement in the, the human rights there. Uh, and just finally, because I visited Cuba last year, I would like to say that I think, I hope there is some optimism uh, for that country um, with, uh, with the new change of the uh, administration in the US. And when I was there, I found, and it was obviously before Obama was elected, but a huge amount of optimism within that country as well, because the Cuban people want to have relations with the rest of the world. Uh, and indeed, I believe that the internet will be a great, uh, a great leveller within Cuba, because ultimately, although there's tried to be by the administration a segregation of Cuban from non-Cuban, whether that's financially with a different currency or whether that's actually in terms of where they're allowed to go. Uh, ultimately, they can't keep uh, the Cuban population away from the outside world and, uh, and the Cubans will, will find out what they've been missing and uh, uh, although it's been predicted that uh, change will come for a long time it may actually be coming. I do have to, I do have to finish because I do want to give the uh, others uh, a chance to, uh, to sum up for their parties but uh, I would just end with I think there is a, a, a cause for optimism there as, as all members have outlined and I hope that it will not be so long before we revisit this issue again.